Hi guys, so if you use Lightroom for your um, editing workflow, um, but you would like to edit from the Iridian Transformer uh, DNGs instead of the raw files straight from the Fuji camera, that's what this video is about. Um, Iridian does generate better uh, files to edit from as DNGs than what Lightroom does trying to interpret the RAF files by itself. So if you shoot JPEG, this won't really mean anything to you, but if you shoot JPEG and RAW or only RAW, um, this is super powerful and will get you much better results than editing the RAW files straight in Lightroom. So um, this is a Iridian Transformer. We're just going to change a couple of settings quickly if you're installing for the first time. So you've installed Iridian Transformer, Windows or Mac, doesn't really matter. You get this drop-down box here. RAW options, uh, you can select it to generate smoother, more natural looking images or more detailed images. I like more detailed. It's not sharpening per se. It's a different way the engine actually demosaics the file. Um, I leave the sharpening as default. I leave all of this default, but I do turn on apply corrections to image because these are the corrections that are built into the lens profiles on the Fuji camera already. So why would you disable those? So turn on more detailed and apply all of your correction settings. Um, you can turn on translate film mode to Lightroom camera profile if you want to shoot uh, raw files that then show up in Lightroom with the film pack already applied. So if you shoot classic Chrome and you want your raw file to already exhibit classic Chrome, uh, you can turn that on. I'm going to leave it off for now. All right. And then the last thing you do in Iridian Transformer is you go to help and you go to install Lightroom plugin. That's it. Iridian is now installed as a plugin inside Lightroom. So we don't process our images here in Iridian. We do it from Lightroom, which is the power. Okay, so I'm going to go into my Lightroom catalog quickly. I have a catalog called Personal Catalog. That's where I keep all my family photos and things. I don't keep my professional work there. I like to keep them separately. It just makes more sense. All right, now the way I like to import into Lightroom is I like to first import from where the folders already are. So I work from my desktop to start with. Here are my raw images, here are my JPEG images. I'm gonna drag them onto the Lightroom icon. Lightroom's already going to know what I want to do with those files. It's saying here are the files, the refs and the JPEGs next to each other coming from separate folders, which is really useful, rather than having them in the same folder and trying to figure out what similar frames are refs and what similar frames are JPEGs. Um, I built standard preview, previews and I built smart previews always because it speeds up editing significantly. Let's import those quickly. It takes a moment. All right, those come through. I can see I've turned on the information view. So here is my RAF file. Here is my JPEG file, then the partnering RAF file, then the partnering JPEG file, and so on. So I just want to show you what happens if you edit an underexposed JPEG as it is. All right, let's just go and slam up the exposure a whole bunch quickly. You notice as I push up the exposure, my color starts falling apart here. Okay, you start getting posterizing. You can see here the colors have started banding together and actually the green is now two different shades of rubbishy green. I haven't recovered enough information to actually use this file. And that's why we would want to switch from a JPEG to the raw file equivalent, which was raw file number two, because now if I push up my exposure, I don't get any banding. I get to keep all of my color um, depth and yeah, basically it's color depth that you're preserving. Just going to develop module here quickly. This is really just to show you why you would want to work from a from a raw file. Just zoom in and you'll see that uh, with the raw file, I protect a lot of my color integrity. This is shot ISO 800, so uh, there will be noise. Don't worry about that. That's not the point of this video. Okay, there you go. So now I don't have a mishmash of green tones. Um, all my green tones maintain their integrity. But now I want a better raw file to edit from because as I said, Lightroom doesn't generate a nice raw file for me to edit from. The demosaicing engine in Lightroom doesn't process the files nicely. So all I do is I select the image that I want to send out to Iridian and road trip back to me, round trip back to me as a DNG file. I'll go up to File, Plugin Extras, Process Selected Refs to DNG. 
it automatically goes and opens Iridian. So you can see it's opened Iridian in the background here, and it's giving me real-time uh, feedback in Lightroom from the Iridian plugin. We'll just wait for it to generate that DNG, and then it'll pop it into the same view, and we'll be able to see it. It doesn't take too long, but uh, it is demosaicing this extremely complex file into the best possible format. So we'll have a bit of patience while it pushes it through. All right, so what it's done now, here is where is, uh, yes, all right, so here is my Fuji RAW file with that um, exposure already boosted. I'll set it back to normal. So these two files are effectively the same RAW file, but this DNG version that's come from Iridient is now a superior format to work with. It's been demosaic in a different manner to this raw file but now your workflow continues as normal now I just go and apply all of my standard adjustments um, mostly realizing that um, because it's a DNG format now it's already in a format that Adobe understands better digital negative DNG is in Adobe format so Lightroom knows how to handle this file format far better than it does the Fuji file format um, your editing is going to be much, much faster, much snappier. Um, highlight and shadow recovery are going to be phenomenally better and you won't get any banding. Um, all this noise you see generated here now is because I used the sharper method instead of the smoother method and I'm shooting an ISO 800. If this was a well-exposed photo, you wouldn't see as much of this noise. In fact, you probably see none of that noise. My point is... Let's just go and synchronize these two settings. So I'm synchronizing these settings to the, from the DNG to the uh, Fuji RAW file. Now look at them side by side. And uh, you'd have to try this with your own images to see what the discrepancies are. Um, I'll just go back to grid view. I'm expecting to see improvement, but I'm kind of doing this on the fly just to show you the workflow. So perhaps we won't see improvement. Um, let's just switch between the DNG and the RAF. Let's go to the same spot in both files. Mm. Okay, so you'll see you'll see a lot more detail in the Iridient file. Don't pay attention to the noise for now. That's mostly an exposure issue. So you'll see in my beard here, there's a lot of detail. Whereas in the Lightroom file, you don't have that detail. And you might say, yeah, sure, that's because of the, the noise and that's because of the sharpening. It's not the case. Try this with, with an image that you are expecting good results on. So shoot a well-exposed image and then try and decode it as a RAF in Lightroom and try and decode it as a DNG through Iridient and you will see a big, big improvement in, in, in clarity and in color depth. Um, you're getting chromatic noise here. You can see there are purple and pink and green and blue spots in the noise recovery that Lightroom has applied. Whereas with Iridient, um, it's all smoothed out. There's no color banding. You're not having that um, posterizing that you're getting in Lightroom. Uh, let's just go back to where we were. But basically, that's it, guys. So what I'm really illustrating here is select a raw file. Go File, Plugin Extras, Process the file. It gets pushed out to Iridient. See, Iridient is already running in the background, generating that file for me. And then it gets round tripped right next to the original RAF file with the same file name. Um, and you can batch as many as you like. You can do five at a time if you want. And that's, that's my workflow, guys, for sending out from Lightroom to Iridient, road tripping back in and then editing the DNG, which is already optimized for editing in Lightroom. I select both maybe you didn't know this because i don't know um, what your skill level is if you select both images and you go to the develop module and you've got auto sync turned on okay by default it's off turn it on that's this little guy down here any changes i make to the one image let's just pull up the shadows let's pull up some exposure let's put in some clarity let's put in some contrast okay now when I go back to my grid view, those changes have already synchronized from the DNG to the ref, and I can actually use survey mode to decide which image I prefer. Um, yeah, just a cool extra tip for free. 
Hope this has helped, chaps. Let me know if you've got any questions. Sorry I rushed through it, and sorry I mixed um, topics a little bit. I'm sure you have questions about why the Iridian image doesn't look as good, um, but I hope you understand that that's because it was a really poorly <laughs> exposed image, and I've done you no favors. Um, yeah, drop a comment if you've got any questions. Otherwise, hope this has helped you with your workflow. Bye.